Manchester United possibly to make the smartest signing they'll ever make this January in a young Ecuadorian midfielder, very technically gifted DM, similar to Caicedo, cheap, brilliant DM out there. And I've done a bit of research on this guy and he is brilliant. We will get into that, but there's also been more leaks coming out. Certain players in the dressing room, British players that are not Marcus Rashford, leaking stuff on Eric Tenag players turning on the manager, but also the club putting out briefs and leaks against Tenal to try and turn the fans on Tenal. And I've had enough of these leaks. But before we get into the leaks, I want to start the video on a positive with this new midfielder at Manchester United I've been linked to. I've done a bit of research on him. I've spoke to my friend that watches South American football. I've watched some videos on this guy, translated some things, and I'm going to tell you all about this midfielder we might be getting in January. So it came out today that Manchester United are ready to fight with Barcelona and Juventus to sign 19-year-old midfielder Oscar Sambrano in January. Now, very similar to Casado, a brilliant 19-year-old Ecuadorian, young, technically gifted, very modern type DM that can also play as an eight, but majority of six is available for good money in January. Barcelona and Juventus also looking at this guy. Now, I did a bit of research on this guy. Luton Town actually tried to sign him last month, but they had some offers rejected. Ajax were really interested in signing him in the summer. And we know what Ajax are like when they're signing young gems. And even Benfica have had their eye on this player. So, you know, when all the top clubs that have good scouting and good recruitment are looking at this guy. That's a very positive sign. I did a bit of research on this guy and I spoke to someone on this guy and he was described as a very modern, technically gifted midfielder, saying his ability on the ball is elite. He's a DM with elite ability on the ball, which is something Casemiro lacks. Casemiro is a good DM uh, defensively, but obviously he's passing and his ability to break lines is a potential weakness of Casemiro. It was said that he has ability to filter passes and detect spaces in seconds and he's very positive for the team. His, inter his intelligence, technical ability and IQ has really benefited the team. At 19 years of age, he's one of the most important players for his team and very positive, good work rate, good mentality. So just from what I've read up on this guy, he seems to have a lot of the things that Manchester United are potentially missing. Now, I read up a few more things on this guy. Um, the People's Person also did a report on this. It's coming out from multiple sources that we are looking at this guy uh, to sign him in January. He will be available for relatively cheap. It was said again here, Manchester United are ready to fight Barcelona and Juventus for the 19-year-old Oscar Sombrano. The 19-year-old defensive midfielder is a great prospect for the future and there's serious interest from European clubs in his services as well. Um, lots of people really interested in him. Um, they were said they described him as a rough diamond that needs further polishing. And while he might not be a ready-made solution, considering how much United have ruled a uh, decision not to go after Casado, um, you know, this <laughs> signing this guy could be a good idea. We really rejected not signing Casado as well. And they received a lot of important bids from from Ajax and Luton in the summer as well. But United will need to hurry up if they want to get this guy because there's going to be a lot of competition. And look. This is a smart signing with competition that a lot of smart a lot of clubs want, which makes me feel like United aren't going to get him because we don't do smart signings from South America, young players. And if there's competition and we're so slow and we're not fast, this is one that we could miss out on. But this is a player that, you know, probably would want to come to United just because of how big we are in South America. Now, on some of the research I did on this guy, I actually found this statistic. So among every single player under the age of 21 or 21 years or under in the whole world of football, he ranked third for progressive passes. Now, obviously, he's, his league is easier than the Premier League, but I think that's a brilliant statistic. In worldwide midfielders aged 21 or younger, he ranked third for progressive passes. So he's in the 99th percent of progressive passes. What do we need in our midfield? someone that has the ability on the ball to progress the ball forward. Casemiro, Mount and Bruno is seen as Tenog's first choice midfield three, but they're better off the ball than on the ball. Casemiro's best job is protecting the back four or being in that final third and, and actually having an impact and scoring a goal. Mason Mount's best ability is his ability to press off the ball. Bruno's great off the ball, but Bruno's a creator. We don't have someone in the Man United midfield that's a natural born kind of guy when it comes to ability on the ball. Uh, someone that can break the line, someone that can get the ball from the first stage to the third phase, play through the opposition's midfield lines. That's what we really lack. We, we've improved so much building up at the back with Anana, but the build up in the field, getting the ball from midfield to attack has struggled. We we need maybe someone that can carry the ball. We needed a Frankie de Jong S player so badly. We need someone that can break lines, that can carry the ball. And that's why I think Tenag had so much favour in Kobe Maynard, because Kobe Maynard was, was very good at that kind of stuff. 
Now, obviously, this is a 19-year-old guy, and I'm not saying that he is ready. He's kind of like a Moises Casado in his first season at Brighton. He was kind of dipped in and out. He's kind of like a Julian Alvarez in his first season at Manchester City. But I think it's very obvious, and the United Muppeteers and really reliable sources had said this about Manchester United, that they are looking to replace Casemiro next year. And if Manchester United were a smart team that fought ahead, which unfortunately we're not, we'd probably go and get this guy for a couple million quid and then maybe go to Bayer Leverkusen because we're linked to the Bayer Leverkusen DM Palacios and maybe sign him as well for 35 million quid. I think if United were smart, they would sign this guy for 5 million and then this guy from Bayer Leverkusen for 40 million, which is reportedly who they want. It's not my first choice. And then all of a sudden you've got two DMs in that are quite young, for one's young, one's more experienced to come in and potentially replace Casemiro long term. Personally, that's what I'd do. But let me know your thoughts down below. If we get linked to this guy even more, I will do some more research. But this video was meant to be out about 40 minutes ago, but I've just been doing a bit of research on this guy. And I have to say, I'm really excited by what I see. But I do want to get into the league. Samuel Luckhurst, of all people, has come out with his Manchester United leaks. And there was also a story on David De Gea that came out that I literally wound me up so much, which I think is a board leak. Um, but we're going to talk about this. This has come from players. This has come from British players that aren't playing under ten Hag, so not Rashford. You can probably guess who these, these are coming from. And then I want to get into the other leak, which is a board leak, which annoys me even more because it's the Manchester United board finding a way to try and get people to turn on ten Hag. But it was said this on Eric ten Hag today. A number of Manchester United players are starting to grow wary of Eric ten Hag's criticism. Dressing room sources have said that some players believe Ten Hag has favourites in the squad who he's unprepared to single out for criticism, while others feel they're routinely rounded on by him. Who do you think this has come out from? Who do you think this has come out from? Oh, my, it's so obvious it's Jadon Sancho. I'm not here to spread hate on Jadon Sancho. I like Jadon Sancho. But every this is so obviously from Jadon Sancho. And his camp, because last week when Jadon Sancho, or two weeks ago with the international, the whole Jadon Sancho thing coming out, Jadon Sancho's team had briefed to the media that Sancho was annoyed at 10R because he feels that he gets scapegoated for things that Anthony wouldn't, that there was favouritism and that he's not been picked ahead of favouritism. All of a sudden, this leak is coming out to Samuel Luckhurst. You know, it's 99% Jadon Sancho. Just the way that it, it was sort of said here, you know, they feel, he feels, you know, un feels like Ten Hag has favourites. And the reason I think that this is Jadon Sancho for the league, and I don't like accusing specific players of leaks without me knowing for sure, is that it goes in on Anthony, but then it reveals who's going to be the next right winger in the squad, which, you know, right wing is the position that would have been Jadon Sancho. It was also said certain United players feel they've been put into an invidious position to carry out Ten Hag's tactical instructions as there is a feeling in the squad that his approach has been compromised by the indefinite absence of Anthony. Essentially, whether you like Anthony or not, whether you like Mason Mount or not, Anthony and Mason Mount do something off the ball that no one else at United does. And I think Jack Fawcett or someone said it really well on Twitter, you know, what Anthony brings to United off the ball, his work rate, his ability to trap back and press and Mason Mount was massively, massively missing in that Bayern Munich game, um, Jack said here, Jack Fawcett said, our pressing numbers have nosedived since Anthony's suspension and Mason Mount's injuries. Players like Rashford and Eriksen, who struggle out of possession, have bitten under the spotlight massively since the loss of those two. There's been more and more reliance on Rashford and Eriksen to press, which is what they don't do since then. But also, when Jadon Sancho was asked to play right wing, he Ten Hag wants Jadon Sancho to do what Anthony does, which is press, have Anthony's work rate, defensive ability to track back, and Jadon Sancho can't do that. Now, the interesting thing that's come out now is that Mason Mount could now occupy Anthony's role. And to be honest, Mason Mount probably has um, the best work rate out of all the players left that could play that role. For me, it's got to be between Mason Mount and Polistri. Bruno's got to stay central, but Mason Mount did play right wing for a fair bit under Thomas Tuchel. So I have no issue with Mason Mount playing on the right-hand side, as long as they mix up between him and Polistri. But I feel like those leaks have come out from Jadon Sancho's camp. Speaking about Anthony at right wing and how Anthony does this and that and all of this. Um, speaking about Ten Hag's favouritism and revealing who's going to play at right wing now. I think, you know, the leaks are disgraceful. And I think, you know, it's obvious that certain players are turning on Ten Hag already. And, you know, a lot of people will turn on Ten Hag as well. But when, when are we going to learn that the problem is the players, the problem is the board, the problem is the owners? We sat manager after manager after manager, but we could have Pep Guardiola in. And in two years' time, if things aren't going his way, players will be turning on Pep Guardiola. The board and the board will be turning. Um, the board will not be backing Pep Guardiola. It's not about the manager anymore. 
players are turning on the manager. We've got to learn that the players are the problem when they're leaking stuff. When when certain, say, Man United players refuse to apologise to the manager and would rather not train, play or have anything to do with the manager for four months to get a move rather than work hard and prove the manager wrong. That's when you know the players are the problem. wan got dropped. wan Delo Delo got the favouritism treatment. But did wan put out leaks and complain? No. wan worked super hard, really hard in training like he'd never worked before. He got an opportunity. When he had an opportunity, he played well, he took it. He now gets more and more opportunities. And there's even talks about wan getting a new contract. Jadon Sancho is dropped and is in the pecking order behind Anthony. Jadon Sancho is annoyed. Jadon Sancho drops. Jadon Sancho falls out with the manager. Jadon Sancho refuses to apologise. Jadon Sancho goes and drops off and says, I'm not going to play for four months, even though Anthony's not available and he's, and he's got a much easier chance of getting back into the team. He drops. There's a big problem with the players. There's a big problem with the attitude of the players. But there's an even bigger problem with the board. The biggest problem at the club is the board because when the club is run so badly from the top, when those at the top of the club are so useless, it sets no example to the players of how to act. If those at the top are so unorganised and disrespectful to the manager, the players will only follow suit. And this is a brief that has come from those at the top of the club. And this has come from the Sun. And you know what the Sun are like. And that is said that Manchester United players are still fuming at how David De Gea was treated by the club this summer. De Gea was a hugely popular member of the United squad. And look, they're trying to blame Ten Hag on this, essentially. This article was trying to blame Ten Hag for treating De Gea badly. This isn't on Ten Hag. And this is, for me, the board treated De Gea badly. Ten Hag made it clear to the board in April he didn't want to give De Gea a new contract. OK, the board led De Gea on thinking he was going to get a new contract, thinking he was going to get a new contract. And then went adios. Then, but then told De Gea at the end of the season in July, no, nah, you're not staying. Ten Hag basically said I didn't want De Gea from April time. But the board were like, mm, we don't have the funds to sign a goalkeeper. I think we're going to have to keep De Gea. We don't have the funds to sign a goalkeeper. Ten Hag pushed them and convinced them he needs the funds to sign a goalkeeper. They led on De Gea. And look, the, the way this club treated De Gea was bad, but I didn't like how this article was trying to blame on Ten Hag. It was almost like the board was trying to blame things on Ten Hag. And I want to show you the cycle of Manchester United. I want to break down the cycle of United. Manager gets a few bad results, so Man United ownership and board become under more pressure. Man United use me media to try and direct negativity towards the manager and get fans to turn on the manager. Lies and leaks come out about the manager and signings to make it look like the manager's at fault. Fans turn on the manager, the manager is sacked, a new manager is appointed, but nothing changes above, so the same cycle continues. There's this continuous cycle at Manchester United. Leaks from players, leaks from those at the bar above. And as soon as a few bad results, all of a sudden, everyone turns on the manager as well. But look, I tell you this now. I'm here from, for the Qatari takeover and I need that to happen soon because this board, this ownership, I've had enough. Smash your likes, smash your subscribe. See you next time.